right, so we are going to start off using the opacity mask, which uses a semi complex, not really complex, but edge masking feature to mask out the edges of the cards so they do not appear to be polygons, but instead actual hair with smooth edges. All right, so you can see right here is the total package for the opacity mask. And we will be borrowing from the height map as well to build out our edge mask. And the way the edge mask works is it gets the viewing angle from the camera to the hair card. It is fully opaque as you view the hair card head on because it determines that the normal coming off the hair card is parallel to the camera's viewing angle. And as the camera pans around to the side, the normals become perpendicular to the camera viewing angle and it'll start masking out and feathering the edges. It's kind of a hard effect to see in practice because you want it to be subtle. You actually don't want it to be too extreme. So we will dig into our graph and I have set up the shader ball to become a plane so it becomes more apparent what this edge mask is doing. You can see it kind of taking effect right there as I move the camera around. All right, so you will need your height map and opacity map uh, to build this edge mask system set up here. All right, and as you can see, I have level controls uh, in terms of contrast after the height as well as opacity. So get in the habit of doing that. Uh, you could also add a clamp or multiply if you wish. All right, and like I said before, this determines whether the camera's viewing angle is head on to the hair card or if it is facing the edge of the hair card because as you see the edge of the hair card, it becomes more apparent that you're looking at a polygon. So it's going to check to see if the camera is viewing the side of a hair card versus front on and set the opacity mask to a zero value if it is looking at the side of a hair card and to a full opaque one value uh, if it is looking at a hair card head on. And we figure that out by these two input nodes right here, the camera vector node, which determines the camera's viewing angle, and you get the vertex normal world space input data right there. And I pretty much gets the object that has this material on it and reads its normal values. And this way we measure if this is parallel or perpendicular, perpendicular being that we're viewing a hair card from the side, parallel to the normal obviously means we're looking at a hair card head on. So we get a dot product uh, to figure out how parallel or perpendicular the camera is to the hair card. Dot products go from negative one space to positive one space. And so negative one means you are parallel to the viewing angle, but looking at it from the opposite side. Zero means you are perpendicular and one means you are parallel and facing the same direction. And because it's in negative one to one space, we need to transfer it to zero to one space because that is what maps use as we all know. So we grab the absolute value, which converts any negative integers to positives. And just what I mean is we're looking at this he hair card head on. So the dot product would be one. This would be a zero because we're looking at it from the side. And if we actually turned it around and look at the other side of the hair card, that would give us a dot product of negative one because the normal is facing the other side. But, you know, we still need to see it. Obviously, we don't want it transparent because hair cards are double-sided. So we have to convert our dot product into absolute space. So after our absolute node right here, the ABS, we want to plug in a multiply node to help control the levels. And so pretty much this will make this uh, your opacity mask from your viewing angle. It'll make it, you know, brighter or darker as you adjust the slider. Unreal Engine typically defaults this to 1.5, and but you can adjust this however you see fit. The lower this goes, the thicker the border around the edges is for being transparent. And the higher it goes, you are brightening up the image and the more thin the transparent edges will be. And we really can't see it right now, but if we click on the cheap contrast filter, which follows the multiply node, and start previewing that, then we could start to see the multiply node take effect. And I named this transparent border width, so uh, you'll see why as I move the slider back and forth, the, it'll get thicker. So the, the more you lower it, the darker it'll get, and thus the thicker the edges will become transparent. And there you go, you can see what it's doing right there. If I move it down a little bit more, now it's completely black. Move it up some, now it's completely white. There we go. You can see it, it is moving along as I move the camera vector angle. So 
this is what it's doing you know if you see it from the side you'll notice it's completely black so it'll be transparent and as I move head on you'll notice our white areas that are opaque come into view and likewise for the other side and so this is a ch cheap and easy way to see what it does by we're previewing the cheap contrast node which you put after the multiply node on the bottom here this controls our contrast value so you just hit one and left mouse button to get a float and plug into there which I've done already and this will control our contrast value you move this up it'll become more contrasty you'll see it gets smaller and the edges get tighter and then disappear if you move it all the way down it is a more subtle transition and it almost looks like a vignette so we'll leave it at 1.5 unreal engine defaults this to 2 uh, but you can put in whatever you see fit and again you always want to right click and uh, hit preview node to look at this because this is quite hard to see at times uh, when it's actually put on to a model uh, you want this to be very subtle all right and then after we're done with the cheap contrast node you want to put in a lerp so you can just hit L and left mouse button and then your lerp filter comes in you're going to put in the cheap contrast filter the output into the alpha of this and so this way this is opaque the edges are transparent and then we are going to put in an edge mask minimum float value which again is one left mouse button to put in a float value and you just name it edge mask minimum you hit that in and if i start previewing this node all this does is it, it controls the minimum value for the transparency so you'll notice the edges got completely white there if i lower this down it'll become more of a medium gray value you'll see what it's doing it's lightening up the edges so if you hit it at zero it'll stay black uh, if you feel it's too transparent when you look at your model you just raise this value up and that'll control our edge mask minimum and after this lerp node right here we again put in another lerp node and we plug in we plug the first one into the alpha of the second lerp node if you start previewing this you'll notice that we see our hair pattern right here this is uh, lerping into our height map actually so this is where we put the height map after we have processed it with a contrast setup right here by a power node with the exponent so again you just grab your height map right here you plug it into a power node once again you hit one and left mouse button to get a float value and plug it into your exponent and for those that do not know you just right click and convert this to a parameter if you want to expose this into the world outliner settings so you don't have to dig into the graph each time you want to adjust this and you can name it that way as well so you'll see what this does i'll start previewing this node so this is reading off of our height map see the hairs right there and again this just pretty much controls the contrast of the height and we are going to mix this in with the alpha all right so once we get our power and exponent value out from our height map we pl again plug in that height map to the second lerp node into the a slot so we start previewing this and you can start seeing what it does and so this way your hairs on the edges do not completely become transparent in a circle shape because again that looks silly so they are using the height map uh, so you know hairs in a foreground are still somewhat opaque and then you get little slivers of background hair and so this helps blend the effect together and again you can control the contrast of the height map down here you can make the effect more subtle or less subtle as you see fit and then finally once we're done with that second lerp node we again get a multiply node so again that is m left mouse button and you are going to multiply this value right here the lerp, second lerp node with the opacity value and that'll mix in the masked edge mask with the height and that'll blend that over the opacity fill mask and right now the circle right here is a little too harsh so we will go into the parameter we set up right here in cheap contrast edge mass contrast 1.5 we can lower that a little bit to get a more subtle circle and now it's less of a circular shape transparent border again you can see what this looks like as the final mask as we move this up and down so that'll make the edges less transparent and to the extreme it's very sensitive so yeah okay and right now i have cranked up the contrast value for the height channel way up to get a very extreme view of what this is doing and yes i realize this looks hideous uh but it's it is a subtle effect that is hard to tell on camera uh so i just wanted to crank it up all the way just so you can see visually what it's doing you'll notice all the edges are fading out as we pan around and our the sides of the cards are exposed and it becomes more opaque as we become head-on with a hair card 
So obviously this is an extreme example, but it, it illustrates what it's doing. And here is another extreme example. This is why I did not put bangs on this character, just so you could see the forehead. Uh, you'll notice the hair cards become transparent and gradually become opaque as I become head on with the hair card. See, right there. And you can really notice it in the tips. Watch the tips disappear as they become edged towards the camera. Opaque as they become towards the camera. And again, this is hideous, but again, I cranked up the settings all the way, so one of the reasons you want to be subtle with this. And we'll get this into a normal setting. Once again, the defaults Unreal suggests for this is usually two for contrast depth value from the height map. Edge mass contrast, they generally put at two. The multiply node, they generally put at 1.5. The edge mask minimum they usually put at zero but again this will all depend on how uh, thick or thin your opacity and height masks are and that brings me up to the topic of dithering remember i said that when you go into the material output nodes dithering section there is a dither opacity mask option right here uh, i suggest you not use that because i think it looks hideous I suggest you use a dither temporal AA. The thing is it also has artifacts, especially when the camera or character is in motion. And I am not a big fan of this either, but it's there and it's commonly used by people and suggested, but I'm not a big fan of using dithering, but we'll plug this in and just so you can see what it looks like with an edge mask. And this is a sample of dithering with the edge masks with a little bit more subtle settings. And again, it's prone to artifacts, and you can see right here there's some ghosting, so you'll have to either play with the settings, but I found that it, it's, it's always there when you use dithering, so that's one of the reasons i do not not a big fan of dithering. If you want to download the material file or see pictures of the graphs online for reference to follow along, please visit my website at cinema.com. You will find a setup guide for the Unreal Engine hair shader with Herdini. Or you can visit and follow my ArtStation page at artstation.com slash cinema. So that concludes part three of the Unreal Engine hair shader tutorial featuring Herdini. Next, in part four, we will cover the flow map input. And part four is more Herdini specific since it comes bundled in with a flow map generator. Uh, but still feel free to follow along as all hair cards use and need flow maps.